Supreme Court has delivered another blow to the Voting Rights Act, overturning a lower court ruling which blocked a flagrantly racist Alabama congressional map, clearing the way for racially discriminatory gerrymandering. Janae Nelson currently serves as the Associate Director Counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, which serves as co-counsel bringing the lawsuit against the Alabama map. And Mark Alliance is the founder of Democracy Docket, a partner in the Elias Law Group, which successfully challenged gerrymandered redistricting maps in North Carolina last week. And they both join me now. Janae, let me start with you on this case. Um, what, what did you successfully argue in lower courts that was then challenged? And what does the ruling, well, lack of ruling <laughs> from the court this week mean for you? Well, thanks for that, Chris. Uh, we successfully convinced a three-judge panel in a federal court. Two judges on that panel were Trump appointees. And we managed to convince all three in a decision that was 225 pages long that the maps that were drawn in Alabama were likely to succeed in our Section 2 claim in our showing that they were racially discriminatory, that our plaintiffs, our clients, uh, four Black voters from Alabama and Black organizations that work to secure the vote, they were able to meet what is a very high bar and threshold to receive a preliminary injunction to stop the usage of those maps going forward on the basis that they were likely to succeed uh, when they go to trial and prove that those maps are racially discriminatory. And, and that's a very significant win. And that is something that the Supreme Court took away by using a procedural double whammy, using the shadow docket, as you mentioned, and then seemingly relying on a case that's another shadow docket case, Purcell versus Gonzalez, to suggest that we're too close to the elections to make any court ordered changes to the redistricting maps. Mind you, we are nine months away from the general elections and four months from the primary elections. So it's it's quite difficult to imagine any way in which you can bring a redistricting challenge as quickly as we did and not wind up running afoul of this court invented rule that we were too close to the election. That Kavanaugh, uh, you know, again, they don't have to write in these shadow docket opinions, which is maddening. Uh, Kavanaugh writing basically cites this Purcell principle. And there's some conventional wisdom there, right? You don't want to be messing with stuff too close to an election. So it's not like a crazy principle. But the point here, which is that they only issue the maps fairly recently. You, you guys filed the challenge right away. Like, if that's, if that's not in time, nothing's in time. And to, to me, Mark, there's an interesting distinction here between what's happening in state courts and, 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 and SCOTUS, right? I mean, you've had a lot of success, both in your litigation and other litigants, in state courts in North Carolina, in Ohio, and other places, knocking down racially gerrymandered maps, uh, you know, grossly uh, sort of manipulated maps that the Supreme Court seems poised to just kind of let fly. Yeah, look, I mean, the fact is that there is no excuse for what we just saw in Alabama. As was pointed out, this this was a case that was filed right away. It was a case that was heard by uh, three judges, two of whom appointed by uh, Donald Trump, one of whom was originally appointed to the bench by Ronald Reagan. So it was not a gimme panel by any stretch of the imagination. And then you have the Supreme Court, you know, coming in in what should be a fairly deferential standard to the trial court that heard all the evidence and wrote the opinion, and instead saying, no, no, we're gonna we're gonna force uh, black voters in Alabama to to live under this map while we sort of sort this out. And, you know, when you contrast that with what some of the state courts have done, it's really noticeable. The state courts have not found that it is too late. The state courts have not found that it is too hard to figure out when yep. uh, partisan gerrymandering is going on. And the state courts have found a way, most fundamentally, to protect the right to vote because the courts are there for a reason. They are there to make sure that when people's fundamental rights are trampled upon, the courts are there to be a check against legislatures, against executive branch actions. And in this case, the courts were doing the right thing and they failed at the Supreme Court uh, to let the lower court's uh, decision stand. I wanna follow up with you, Mark, about uh, uh, the, what's going on in Kansas and then come back to you, Janae, on what's next uh, for your case in Alabama. In Kansas, there's been a bunch of these uh, 
map challenges in a bunch of states. Kansas is a really interesting situation. Republicans create a pretty aggressive Republican gerrymander. The Democratic governor of that state vetoes it. That veto has now been overridden with every single vote of the Republican state Senate. What, what happens there now? So look, we wait and see what happens in the state house, but this is this is insanity. If you look at the vote that just took place in the Kansas State Senate, you had a anti-vaxer Republican who actually sided with the Democrats initially until the Republicans in the legislature agreed to uh, to ban any mandates on any vaccines. So these are the kinds of deals wow. that you have being worked out among Republicans in the legislature in Kansas. We are watching to see what the state house does, and I can promise the state of Kansas this: if the Republican legislature overturns, overrides this veto, and passes a blatantly unconstitutional map, they are going to be sued so, and they will lose. Okay, so Janae, in in the case of Alabama, they've lifted the injunction. The SCOTUS is lifting the injunction. The map can go forward, but what happens now? Well, in this case, justice delayed is justice denied for black voters when it comes to this upcoming primary season and the general elections. But the fight is far from over. We will continue to litigate this case as fiercely as we litigated and won the preliminary injunction. We feel very confident that based on that strong record, we will receive a finding that these maps violate Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. And we will pursue this case as far as it needs to go to establish that the state of Alabama discriminated against black voters by packing them into a single district when yeah. it was clear that two districts should have been created under Section 2. Janae Nelson and Mark Elias, thank you both. I really appreciate that.